Hello, I'm Victor, and this is uh, part two of me creating a 2D Apple Watch game where I create a game and you can just follow along. In this video, what I will be doing is, first of all, adding a main menu to the watch game so that I can show transitions between screens. And also, I will be creating an iPhone port, an iOS port of the game. So that I can show you how you can use the same uh, scene for both watch and for iOS. So let's get started. Code with Victor. Code with Victor. So what we want to do first of all is create a main menu screen. So you want to be here in the storyboard. And let's create a new interface. Go. New interface. Let's add a label. So this could be like the name of the game. Call it my on game. That. Cool. And let's put it in the center, maybe. And we want to have a play button there. And we want it to centered as well call it play and uh, you can see here by this arrow that uh, the game is currently the initial controller the first view that you see when you start the app so we want this to be the initial controller so it's just this checkpoint is initial controller we check that we can see that the arrow moves to this view instead and uh, to connect the two views then we just do like this, we hold control and create a action segue. So let's just do a push segue and let's see how that looks. We have the main screen and we hit play. Yep, yeah, we go to the game. Very nice. So that was it for the watch part, actually. So it's not uh, more difficult than that. So moving along, we want to port the game to iOS. So how we do that is first we need to have a uh, iOS target. So uh, let's add that. So we do a new target. And here we want to select iOS and then scroll down to app. So if you are creating a game from scratch or a watch app from scratch, like we did in the last video, and you already know that you want to have both iOS and a watch companion in the same project, then I would recommend to just, when you create a new project, include both from the start. But since here we started with just the Apple Watch target, then we will also add iOS app target uh, like this. So let's add that. Let's call it um, on my on game iOS. Can't be called the same as uh, as the watch target. So this is called my on game iOS. We'll be using storyboard here as well, just for simplicity. For iOS, when you use SpriteKit, uh, then it probably works well with uh, Swift UI. You don't have the same kind of bugs that you have in Apple Watch. But for now, since we're using Storyboard for Apple Watch, let's just use the same for uh, the phone. And everything else looks good, so create it. Um, yeah, I always like to try to just run it uh, immediately, even though when it's a new target, it should probably work out of the box. But you never know. It could be some issue with your simulator or something. Uh, but it looks like it's running, so nice. So um, now we want to go into our storyboard here and we want to add Sprite Kit here. Let's add Sprite Kit View. Uh, and here, uh, if you haven't used the uh, iOS storyboards before, then uh, you can see that it's a little bit more difficult, but also more uh, dynamic than on Apple Watch, so you have more options with constraints and stuff. So uh, we have uh, here our uh, Sprite Kit view, but we want it to be full screen. 
So let's align it to uh, the top part here and make it full width and full height. So as you can see here for uh, newer iPhones, then you have this safe area. So the safe area uh, starts here so that you, you know that you're safe from this notch and also in the bottom that you know that you're safe from uh, this bottom part. But for now, for this sprited view, we all actually want to have it full screen. So how we do that is uh, we select the sprited view, then we can control move it like this. And we can start by setting the leading space to the safe area and also the top space to safe area. And then we can, uh, if we select the constraint, we can change it from safe area to super view, which is uh, the full view. We want it to be zero. So we want it to be exactly uh, next to it. And also for the top part, we can do the same thing. Set it to zero. So even though here it doesn't look like it will be constrained to, to these parts, uh, when we actually run it, uh, it will be. So for the width and height, let's do the same thing. We want equal width and equal height. Oh, now you can see that I actually moved up here. So now we actually have the super view, but our multiplier is like this. And we want the multiplier to be one, but it, it's 100% of the width. And for, oh, sorry, the height. And here is the width. So that will be one as well. So now it should be full screen. So let's see. Oh, right now we get an error because uh, we need to create our we need to create our uh, uh, sprite kit uh, controller. So let's just do like this. We can uh, rename this to uh, like similar to how we did for Apple Watch. I like to rename it to make it clearer. So let's rename it to Game View Controller here and also sure in the storyboard that we rename it to uh, game view controller and we want a reference to this sprite kit view let's add it here maybe out sprite kit view oh we need to import sprite kit as well A view, yeah. So SK view. Um, so eight. Now we have similar to we had for watch. We have these connections here, so we can have a sprite kit view, and we can connect that. And actually, we shouldn't get a crash now because now we import the sprite kit. Yeah. So now we can see that it's gray. Uh, nice. So now we want to add our game scene that we created, uh, this scene. So first of all, we want to make sure that this file is also included in the iOS target. So if we go here, you can see that currently it's only connected to the watch kit extension, but we can also add it to this target by doing this. And now you can see that we get a lot of errors, like cannot find type paddle in scope. That is because paddle uh, should also be added to this target. So be used by game scene, um, both ball and opponent paddle will be added as well. Now we shouldn't get any errors from there. So let's let's see. Uh, actually, I want to be using you did team. It here, right? We call the super function, and then we can present our. Oh, actually, let's uh, let's do similar to what we did for Apple Watch. Let's see how we did. We did, had a create scene. We'll create scene here, and this part. That we create our scene. 
we will get boundaries in a different way. Percent scene is like this, so that to e like that. Let's comment out game over screen and score label for now, uh, because we will be using them, but they will be different different types in uh, in UI kit and in watch kit. So for now, just comment them out because we will re-add them, but for now, since it gives us errors, we will just comment them out. And actually want reference to scene like this. That game scene and boundaries are we can probably just do like this. I think frame the side. Um, view, view frames. Okay, I think that should be. Let's, let's just print it to see that it actually is the correct. And hopefully, actually, the view should be visible now. Yep, there it is. So it looks like it's the correct size. I wonder why I have it in view did appear. I know I use usually have it there, but it's just by habit. So maybe actually let's add it to view did low because you see that it was like a small flash of not seeing. The... Okay, that probably looks better, I think. Let's see if that works all the way. Uh, some things when I program, it's just by habit that I do the same kind of thing. But for now, actually, probably this works better. Okay, but you could see that here we have, we have the game, uh, but there's a couple of things here that I like to fix. Um, so, of course, we don't have the UI, we don't have the score label, the game over screen and stuff like that, but that will come later. First of all, we want to be able to control our player paddle. Uh, I think that should be the first step. And also later, I would like to probably have the, the game be a little bit smaller on the height, because this feels a little bit too, too uh, high. Um, for this game. So I will probably make it like one to one aspect ratio. So the height will be the same as the width. But first of all, let's just um, move the player paddle. So a way we could do that is, so we don't have the crown here, obviously, like we have on the Apple Watch. So let's just do like uh, when we start uh, a touch on the phone, and then when we move our touch, uh, we can move the player paddle. I think that would be nice. So uh, in our view controller, let's see here. I think we have touch again, like that. And let's see here, touches first. And I think, uh, see here, let's location in view. Mm. So we only we're only interested in the, in the Y as well. So let's see what happens here. So this is an optional because this could be nil. So let's unwrap it like this and print Y to see what. Yeah. So we get uh, the Y value. So uh, here it's zero at the top uh, or close to zero. I guess I don't get the value in the when you're outside the safe area. Um, and here we get a higher value lower down. So it's actually the opposite to Sprite Kit, where in Sprite Kit, uh, the beginning of the, the y axis is down here and moves up. But for uh, the touch position, the beginning is actually up here and it goes down instead. So that's quite interesting. So we have the Y position of the first touch when our touch began. So what we want to do is check the delta between touches. So uh, the, the difference in the Y position. So let's just store 
like the last Y should be a CG. Yep. So if we get the Y position and we can set the last Y to that position. Or actually here we don't need to unwrap it since this is also a nil, a nilable CG float. So we can simplify it to do just like that. Then we want to check for touch mood. So let's see, how do we do this? Here we can actually wrap it, I believe. And if let y equal that, and we will update last y to this, but the delta y is the y, mm, uh, it should be, yeah, y minus last y. So if uh, the new y variable is, let's see, if it's higher than the last y, then this will be positive, right? And we also, oh, actually, let's do like this instead. So we move this here, and we will always set the last y just to make sure. Then here we can unwrap both last y and y. So we do some, uh, so we get the, the y here and we'll always update this since it, it can be optional, so it's fine. But we only do any, any calculations if we have a y value and also a last y value. So let's see what delta y says. So hopefully now we get a value here when we move the touch down. Yeah, and it's positive and I move it up, it's negative. So that's what I wanted. And let's see here. So if we go to our game scene here, you can see that we have the move player. And actually, in, in, the, in the previous walkthrough, then we actually added two uh, times 200 here, but I removed this. So instead we use uh, just the crown delta here, but instead, let's see here, instead in our previous game interface controller, I moved the uh, times 200 to here instead, uh, to the crown did rotate. And that means that we can use the same function without the 200 we can use the same function in in the ios port so let's see we have scene move player and it's called crown uh, delta but uh, that's fine we could actually remove um, rename it to like i don't know change delta or oh yes delta <laughs> i guess let's see how this works it would probably be opposite direction, I think. Yeah, it's the opposite direction. I want it to be the same direction, so like this. Maybe want to be a little bit quicker, so you don't have to move the thumb quite as much. I think this should be good. It's a little bit difficult to uh, check these small changes in. Um, on the computer uh, it's much easier obviously to check it on the physical device to see how it actually feels but i think uh, i think this feels pretty good so there we have the player movement now we want to set the size for the game let's see how we should do let's do it here so instead of using this size let's do like this mm. I set the size value to, so we want it, like I said, we want it to be uh, aspect ratio one to one. And uh, that means that we want it to be the same height as the width. So let's create a new size uh, value here where width is the size and height is also size. Let's see what the, uh, oh. Obviously now it's stretched. So what we can do here, I think we probably do scale mode. 
Nice. Right. Okay, it looks like that's what we wanted. You can see now that it, it caps to here, so uh, we don't have the full width. I think that's probably better. And um, let's see, maybe we want to show some orders here or something. Go to a game scene, like top order. You'd call that shape. Width could be same as the width here, and the height could be, let's say, and this will have color of white. And, and let's add it like that. And the position should be so X, it should be in the middle. And for Y, it should be. Um, so the top is obviously the height and plus 10, which is the height of the other. Okay, we can't actually see the border. So like this, what happens if I change this to aspect field? Oh no, it should probably be aspect field. Okay. So that's uh, something uh, something new for me to learn that probably it cuts off uh, the sprite kit scene there. I guess that's obvious maybe when I think about it. Let's just do something more simple and just this. Yeah, then I can see, I guess that one pixel of it or something. Oh, no, it's probably five pixels. One and six. Okay, that's fine. So we can just see the the top border. So that's fine. So let's do the same thing for uh, the bottom border. You like that, but instead here, you do like that. Okay. Cool, now we have our borders here. Uh, so that's good enough. So we can see the ball bounces at the border. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is to add a score label. I think that could probably be the next thing. So let's go back to our to our storyboard. And we want to add a, oh, it's just called label, of course. We'll add it to our view here and Let's make it white so that we can see it when we have our black background. Red color, and let's copy default value from here. So that here we need to add our constraints. So um, let's just set it. Uh, relative to our safe area. So we can center it horizontally and let's set the uh, top space to safe area like that. And, and there we go. And maybe we can set it to uh, set it to a hundred. So okay here we have the score label. It's not very pretty, but it works. So first of all, the important part is to make sure that it works and then uh, you can make it uh, look nicer later. So, oh, actually, maybe instead of center it, we want to have it full width so that it will never, because uh, you don't really know the width of it here. Mm. So let's make sure that the width is uh, always full width so that will never uh, cut any uh, numbers out so let's just do equal with 
safe area and we want the multiplier to be one so it's equal with so that it still works okay cool it works so now we can add add an outlet here let's see score label and that is ui label so now we can add score label here uh, but obviously this will give us an error because we haven't defined score label in um, in our game scene yet so let's do that first so let's see here um for watch os we import watch kit but for ios we can do the same thing but on ios it's called a ui kit then so do like this um ui label and um so game over screen uh, i think that will probably be a group or let's just uh, do a ui view which is like a general ui view uh, let's update everywhere you can see we have watch os so let's just do both for games game over screen and score label since we're here so you can see for game over screen instead of set hidden it will actually be uh, is hidden that and our update score label we instead that we just set text uh, the text variable like that and that was it for the ios specific thing in game scene so actually since we're on it we can just add uh, the game over screen here you it like that uh, and we need to we can see here that we haven't actually connected it yet so let's do that here main storyboard and we go to controller and we have here our score label make it like that let's see if that works so zero to zero and if he scores yeah zero to one let's see if i can score maybe i probably will get it okay he's actually very good at this game he's probably played it before <laughs> um so let's just let him win for for this time um but to let someone win we obviously need the game over screen uh, we'll have already created all the code that we need for the game over screen actually so let's just add all the ui for it so we want to have a normal view uh, like this view and uh, we can add it like that and you can style this however you want but i want to style it to be uh, like an overlay over everything else similar to how we did on the apple watch game so let's do that I'll move it to uh, set leading space and top space also equal with and equal so let's see but i obviously want it for this view and not the safe area so set it here the multiplier one and we want this to not be on the safe area we want it super view and it should be zero here this one this should be relative to super view and the constant should be zero so now we can see that it's full width and everything looks good i want it probably to be uh, oh sorry here and i want it to be a black background Let's see but it's black and 50% opacity so now it's exactly like like it was in um, the watch game it should probably be above the score now it's above everything else and here we can add a text that can say game over that could be white well and let's do a similar thing where we set 
equal width to this and it could be centered vertical and it could be centered horizontally and the multiplier one okay so now the game over screen should always be visible probably yeah there we go and we want to have a, a replay button similar to how we did for the apple watch game oh so let's say replay this could be also centered horizontally but this we want to place it below game over so we can do like this we align it to the let's see what happens if i do up like up to game over 100 oh okay that's probably what we wanted then so we align it to game over but we want it to be uh, relative to game over so now we have a replay button great uh, so first of all we want to um, show our game over screen uh, when we lose or someone win so uh, we already have all the code in game scene for that but in our view controller here we haven't connected it so let's do that first go to our storyboard here and see what here and our connections have the game over screen go and this should be hidden from the start that is here now it should be hidden until someone reaches and uh, let's see how the score label is one so the score label is Okay, so now we can see the score again. Let's see that uh, the game over screen shows. Maybe we can fast forward. I probably should have set this to uh, just that you win with one score instead of just waiting. But now I'm committed. Let's see if he can beat me, even though doing anything it looks like i've tied it this is a very exciting game <laughs> let's see okay i think i will win now okay uh, it's not a very difficult game let's see but we see our game over screen and we have a replay button but obviously the replay button doesn't do anything yet so that's probably the next thing we want to do uh, so for that we'll need to add let's see how we did it uh, on watch the watch we had a replay uh, ib action and that's actually exactly what we want to be using here as well so let's see where we add it maybe here uh, or add it to the bottom like we did for that watch so instead of set hidden it is uh, yet hidden is hidden sorry and we have the create scene and uh, let's try this but i've learned from my mistakes so let's change this to just need one score to win replay and we obviously haven't connected it yet so i forgot about that so let's go back to our storyboard and and we have our replay action here so let's connect that to to our replay this and i believe it's the primary action triggered and uh, we try again let's see okay it looks like he will be winning this game and he wants replay yeah it's the same now as for the apple watch so that looks like it's working so that's very nice mm. But the only thing left now is to have the same uh, or a similar kind of main menu screen which we added for the apple watch so let's do a similar thing here on uh, the iphone uh, so first of all maybe we can change this back to use five for score so we get that then we go back to our storyboard here 
And very similar to how we did for the iPhone, we want to create a new, um, let's see, view controller. That we want this uh, to be our initial view controller. And here we can add a label uh, for uh, the name and uh, name of the game, my pawn game. This could be equal with center it center. It could be one like that. Yep, that's good. And the text should be center. And we want to have oh button is here. We want to have play button and center horizontally. Let's see up. Okay. So now it's similar to our uh, replay button here. Let's see how that looks. I have my pawn game and just a button here, <laughs> but obviously that button should say play. And here uh, we can do a similar thing that we did for watch. So we can just from here, from the play button, we can hold control and uh, drag it to the game view controller. Let's just uh present modally okay so now you can instantly see some issues here um you can see that uh, we will present the game like this but uh it will appear as a modal like this let's see how that will click play and then we can see our game is actually um yeah it doesn't uh, really work as a game to have it open as a modal like so we still want it to be full screen. So how we can do that is to go to our game view controller. And um, uh, no, actually, it's probably this one. So we have uh, the kind here for the segue to be present modally. But for presentation, we we'll just um, make sure that it's full screen. So now you can see that it will be full screen here. Let's see if that works. My pawn game, play. Yeah, it's full screen. Now it works like it's supposed to. Okay, that was probably it. I don't think I forgot anything. Uh, now we have um, a watch game running on our watch, a 2D sprite kit game. And the same exact game is also running on an iPhone now. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So hopefully from this, you can do something um something cool something some great game uh, maybe with this as a as a start and uh, yeah let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if it's something that you didn't understand or uh, you wanted to know more about and i'll be sure to respond see you soon